This is text structure, nonfiction, and organizational patterns for level three. For this practice, it's going to start easy, but it'll get harder. You're going to read the paragraph, identify the text structure, and explain your answer. Number one, deviled eggs. Pop out, remove the egg yolks into a small bowl, and mash with a fork. Add mayonnaise, mustard, powder, vinegar, salt, and pepper, and mix thoroughly. Fill the empty egg white shells with a mixture and sprinkle lightly with paprika. Cover lightly with a plastic wrap and refrigerate for up to one day before serving. Okay, so in level two, we decided that deviled eggs was sequence. Hopefully you got that right. The reason why it's sequence is we can use textual evidence, meaning things that are in the text that tell us our answer. So go ahead and highlight, pop out, remove the egg yolks into a small bowl and mash with a fork. That would be step one. Then next, step two, you would add the mayonnaise, mustard powder, vinegar, salt, and pepper and mix thoroughly. Then it gives us the next step, step three. Fill the empty egg white shells with the mixture and sprinkle lightly with paprika. And our last step, cover lightly with the plastic wrap and refrigerate for up to one day before serving. So we can put each of these sentences in this paragraph in steps, since it tells us how to do something in order, then that means it's sequential. So our explanation would be that it explains how to make deviled eggs. Let's go to number two. Sports at Erickson. There are two popular sports played at Erickson, basketball and volleyball. Both take place inside the gym at Erickson. Also, each sport has two teams of people. In basketball, however, the ball can be played off of the floor and in volleyball, the ball cannot touch the floor or it is out of play. Basketball and volleyball are popular sports at Erickson. Okay, so this time our explanation. We have two things that we're talking about. Two different sports, basketball and volleyball. It tells us how they are alike and it tells them tells us how we are how they are different. So we are comparing and contrasting the two. So our text structure would be compare and contrast. Number three, when Tim woke up, he didn't want to go to school. His mom took him anyway, so he went to school, but he didn't do any work. Then days passed and Tim still didn't do any work. Mr. Morton called Tim's house, but Tim still wouldn't do any work. Finally, the report cards came out and Tim failed his classes. Tim was sad. Okay, so. We are told when Tim did things. So if we were to draw a timeline, we could start our timeline at the beginning where he woke up and we could end it where he was sad. Then all the other details we can put on our timeline as events that happened from the beginning leading up to the end. So our text structure for number three is chronological or chronological order. Number four, lots of students fail classes. Some students fail because the work is too hard for them. Other times they may fail because they are lazy and don't do any work. Another reason why students may fail is that they don't go to school. If you're not in class, you may miss a lot. Many students fail classes every quarter. Okay, so our paragraph is talking about students who fail classes. They give us reasons why students fail. And the result of that would be that many students fail classes every quarter because of these reasons. So we're given reasons, we're, giving, we're given a result. So our text structure is cause and effect. Number five, 
A lot of students have been failing classes. These students wouldn't be failing classes if they studied more. Asked questions, tried harder, and came in for extra help. Even though a lot of students fail classes, they have many options that they want to pass. So here we are still talking about failing classes and what to do to not fail classes. So we're given our problem, which is failing classes, and then we're given what we can do as a solution so that we can pass the class. So our text structure would be problem and solution. Number six. Volcanoes are a feared and destructive force for good reason. A volcano is like a pressure valve for the inner earth, but they can also be very beautiful. One part of the volcano that people rarely see is the magma chamber. The magma chamber is way beneath the earth's bedrock. It is tremendously hot. Running from the magma chamber to that crater of the volcano is the conduit. The conduit connects the magma chamber to the outer world. At the top of the volcano is the crater. This is where the magma exits. Volcanoes are a beautiful yet dangerously natural phenomenon. Okay, so we're talking about volcanoes in number six. And it's describing what the inside chambers of the volcano look like. So if we're describing what something looks like, that means our text structure is descriptive, or you could say spatial if we were saying where things were in relation to uh, where we're at. Number seven. Devers experienced the highlight of any sprinter's career as she stood on the huge platform in the giant stadium and received an Olympic gold medal. 18 months earlier, she wasn't thinking about running. She was hoping that she would be able to walk again. Just four years earlier in the number summer of 1988, as Devers was training for the Olympic Games to be held in Seattle, South Korea, she began to feel very tired all the time and failed to make the Olympic finals. Okay, so in this paragraph, we're being told about a person's experience, and it's giving us specific times or dates that things happened. So if we put all these dates in, in order on a timeline, that would make our text structure chronological. Generally, there are three categories of circus clowns, white face, August, and character. Each has a specific makeup style and costume. Each has a typical act as well. The neat white face is usually a strict in charge character who sets up the punchline for the joke with a partner. His facial features are neatly detailed in red or black. Circus legend has it that the August clown got his name from a German nickname for someone who is clumsy. The August wears light colored makeup, but white is used around the mouth and eyes, and there's a big red nose. This clown performs a great deal of slapstick humor. Character clowns perform as different personalities, cowboys, scarecrows, grandmothers, or symphony conductors. The most famous character clown, however, is the tramp. Tramps wear different styles of makeup and costumes that are torn or shabby. Some tramp clowns are happy-go-lucky. Others are extremely sad. Still others act like gentlemen who just happen to be out of money. Okay, so we're talking about different types of clowns. They name three different types, and they describe how each one is similar or different to the others. So number eight, we are comparing and contrasting three different types of clowns. Our text structure is compare and contrast. Number nine, how to use the microscope. Plug in the lamp, place a sample of what you wish to observe on a slide, Adjust the mirror so it reflects light from the room up into the objective lens. Place your slide with the specimen directly over the center of the glass circle on the stage. With the low power objective lens placed over the slide, use the course, course focus knob. Look through the eyepiece with one eye while looking, closing the other eye. Use the fine focus knob to find. So we're told how to do something. If we're told how to do something, our text structure is sequence, or sequential order, or order of importance. All those are the same name for one text structure. Number 10. Though toads are still around, they no longer are as common in some areas as they were a few decades ago. The growing use of 
insecticides has reduced their numbers. The chemical sprays usually do not harm toads, but cut down the animal's food supply. Thereby, the toads do not have enough food to survive. There are fewer toads in many areas populated by humans. So we're being told by, about toads that they are around, that they are not as common, and then it gives us reasons why they're not common. So because of this, these things, our result is that there are not very many toads around. So since we're told that something has happened and there are results because of it, but not given a solution, it's cause and effect. Restoring the toad. Dr. Knapp doesn't want people to sit back and let the toad vanish. He believes that everyone is responsible for restoring the toad species. Dr. Knapp thinks we could help restore the toad population if we stop mowing parts of our lawns and let the grass grow wild to reserve space for the toad. He also believes we need to stop using pesticides and fertilizers. The chemicals kill the insects that toads eat. If we preserve some spaces in our lawns and stop using fertilizers, Dr. Knapp believes we can save the toad. So here we're still talking about toads. However, we're given a problem and we're also given a solution, which would be if we stop mowing parts of our lungs, the toads can survive. So our text structure is problem and solution.